Following Google's successful launch of the Pixel 7, there were bound to be at least a few glitches in the system. Even some of the best phones aren't without their quirks, and Google is no exception. Issues with Google Play, uh, dropping calls, all sorts of things are cropping up. And here are the top five that we found and how to fix them. Our dedicated team of writers have been scouring the internet and reading through the issues you said were causing you a headache with the Pixel 7 and the 7 Pro. We're going to focus on the more common slash frustrating issues some of you have been encountering with the Pixel 7 though. So for a broader look at the issues and how to fix them, the link to the full article is in the description below. But getting straight into it, problem one, charging issues. Now it may surprise you or it might not. But the lack of a charging brick included with most phones today is starting to catch up with the market. Enter the Google Pixel 7 and the 7 Pro, which some users say will not charge with older charging bricks, even though the phone says it's connected to the charger. And we can't be certain, but this may be a perceived issue instead of a definitive one. In our experience, older chargers, even USB-A bricks, will provide a very slow charge compared to the newer ones. So it may seem like it's not charging, and in some cases, honestly, you might be right and it might not be charging it. And what this means for consumers is that they will need to keep up to date with their chargers. Google and others have updated their Qi charging wattage to increase the rate at which they deliver power, but so too has USB support been updated. The Pixel 7 series supports the USB power delivery 3.0 PPS standard, and some users have said that the phone charges much more slowly with some older cables and charging bricks. For the fastest charge, you'll need a PD PPS charger, but the Pixel 7 should still charge just slower with a USB PD, and even slower than that with older plugs like USB-A chargers and specifically USB-A to type C cables. Now, as much as it might suck to have to shell out more money for chargers, especially after brands have said that it's an environmentally focused effort, but then you're buying more stuff anyways. <laughs> Back to the point though. Google recommends using its own 30 watt compatible charger, but you can find third party options that work just as well and use a C to C cable. You can check out our guide for the best Pixel 7 chargers from other third-party options linked below. You know what else you'll find linked below? A word from our sponsor, Phoenix. If fat, bulky phone cases are a non-starter for you, introducing Phoenix Ultra Slim smartphone cases for iPhone, Galaxy, and Pixel devices. Phoenix cases retain the shape and size of your smartphone without adding any clunky bulge or distracting branding because Phoenix cases are designed by smartphone nerds like us. In fact, they are us. Phoenix is owned by Authority Media, the same parent company that runs Android Authority. That means earnings from Phoenix cases help us keep the lights on and continue producing the content that you love. Phoenix aims to provide high quality cases that refuse to compromise on protection or slimness. They're only gonna be able to offer this while supplies last. So click the link in the description below to stock up. Problem number two, calls automatically drop after a couple of seconds. Based on our experience, this issue has vastly improved over the Pixel 6, but some Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro users still are reporting issues with calls automatically dropping after a couple of seconds. Some of our writers are experiencing this issue as well, where they aren't able to call back and, and they're dealing with drop calls occurring. And I'm sure that that can get pretty annoying, but here are a few ideas to help you solve it until a software update comes out. Some users say that toggling airplane mode on and off seems to do the trick, but only temporarily. One Pixel owner has actually created an automation flow using the Automate app, which toggles airplane mode on and off every hour. Uh, those who have tried it say that it works. A link to download the automation app, as well as that specific automation is in the link below. Or if you're just old school or just can't be bothered, remember to manually toggle airplane mode off and on every hour or so before you make a call. I know that can be a little bit annoying, but it's an option as well. Now, if your SIM supports voice over LTE and Wi-Fi calling, a few users have reported that disabling Vo LTE temporarily fixes the problem, while others say that disabling 2G actually helps. To do that, go to settings, network, and internet, and then you go to your SIMs, and then you go all the way down to the bottom and allow 2G, and what you're gonna wanna do is disable that. Now, onto the third glitch. 
Problem number three, issues making payments with Google Wallet. Making payments without a physical card has become an extremely popular and convenient way to transfer funds for services, and specifically, Google Wallet slash pay is an excellent way to make payments on the go. The Pixel 7 series, however, is giving some users grief. People are facing various problems using Google Wallet on their phones, ranging from payment failures, card authorization issues, and even the classic magic trick of the disappearing wallet. Ooh. Here are some of the problems and the possible ways that you can fix them. If you're currently using Face Unlock and want to use your Google Wallet for payment, well, you have to choose which one is more important for you. This is a widely reported issue where you'll have payment failure if you're unlocking your phone with your face before you have a chance to have your fingerprint do it. So your only real option is to make sure that your fingerprint unlocks your phone before your face can get it. I just recommend you turn off face unlock and that'll completely get rid of this problem altogether. The second issue with the wallet is almost like a bad magic trick. Like I said before, Google Wallet disappears from the app drawer. Uh, even if you've set up your Google Wallet during the initial setup process, you might not find the app on your phone. Like anywhere. It, it just vanishes. To bring it back, you'll need to clear the cache from your Google Services Framework app. Now, you might have to enable Show System Apps before you do this. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to storage and clear your cache. Just the cache, don't clear your storage as well. Next, when you've switched to a new phone, remember to link it with your bank or else you're gonna experience card authorization failure when paying. Sure, Google Wallet transfers your stored card information when you sign in with your account onto a new device. However, some users find that making a payment doesn't work and this is a tokenization issue where the bank has linked your card and your wallet to your previous device. What you're gonna to wanna to do is contact your bank or generate a new token for Google Wallet. Adding your cards like new ones will re-authenticate them and allow you to use them on your new Pixel phone. Now on to problem number four, the fingerprint scanner issues. But Ryan, didn't you put out a video saying how much better the fingerprint scanner is on the Pixel 7 versus the 6? Yes, yes I did, internet trolls. And while there are issues, the Pixel 7 and the 7 Pro's fingerprint scanners are an improvement, a vast improvement over their predecessors. But that hasn't stopped complaints about sluggish performance. The sensor requires multiple attempts, or sometimes it doesn't work at all. But unlike with the Pixel 6, where Google tried to play the blame game, uh, Google has acknowledged the problems with the fingerprint sensor, and they say that they will be providing a patch soon. But until that happens, you can fall back on the classic Pixel 6 standby of adding the same fingerprint twice, and that seems to do the trick. To do that, go to Settings, Security, Fingerprint Unlock, and add the same fingerprint again. So if it's your thumb, just add it twice. If it's your finger, add it twice. And if you're still having problems after that, your screen protector is likely causing problems with the fingerprint sensor. Google has a list of approved screen protectors if you need a new one. The list is on their website under Issues with Screen Protector section. And if you don't want to go through the whole rigmarole of buying a new screen protector, try increasing touch set sensitivity if the scanner works intermittently with your current screen protector. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into settings, head down to display, and then you're gonna to toggle on the screen protector mode. In other Android phones, it is actually called increased touch sensitivity, but Google specifically changed the name of it to screen protector mode. You're gonna just toggle that on and hopefully that'll help with some of your issues. And last but not least, Problem number five, lag, stutters, and erratic behavior when scrolling. Many Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro owners are having trouble with lag or stuttering when scrolling through apps or the Google Discover page. Some users say that reducing the touch feedback sensitivity helps. To do that, go to settings, sound and vibrations, vibrations and haptics, and reduce the touch feedback setting to a level one or level two, depending on what ends up working for you. You can also try disabling graphic driver presets to help the problem. But what you'll need to do before you do that is enable developer mode. So here's how you enter dev mode. Go to settings, about phone, scroll all the way down to the bottom and find the section that says build number. 
You're gonna tap that a bunch of times until you see a little notification pop up that says you are now a developer. Then you're gonna to go to settings, system, developer options, and you're gonna scroll down. There's a ton of options here. So you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna find graphics driver preferences and you're gonna to toggle that off. It took me a second to find it, but it is in there. And other users say that disabling the smooth display settings work, but be warned that this will revert your refresh rate to 60 Hertz. But if you do want to do that, go to settings, display and toggle off smooth display. Now, if you aren't really interested in losing your refresh rate, the only real option is to wait for a software update to address that issue. Overall, the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro are proving to be reliable devices with a few quirks, and hopefully you found this helpful. But it begs the question, have you found some issues that we didn't mention today or ones that weren't listed here? We'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. But until next time, I'm Ryan from Authority Media. Be kind, and we'll see you on the next one.